I'm Shadab and uh, by profession I'm an engineer, by passion I'm an author and researcher as well. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, quantum leap, how quantum is redefining the future of computing. So it's all about basically computation, right? So um, I will talk about my journey a bit before taking you towards this complex topic. It might be a nightmare for many of you to understand quantum but it's not as difficult. So when I was a kid, um, I was fascinated by the calculator watch. How many of you have been sort of like um, trying to buy it or have bought it just because uh, that was very interesting to look at and do calculation on your hands? Few of you, right? So even I was sort of like, uh, it was interesting to look at and I just wanted to have it and bought it and later I didn't use it much. That's a different story. But, um, uh, this was my first computation device, I will say, like uh, when I was studying in school. After that, uh, as I moved to 7th or 8th grade, scientific calculator, I was like, uh, I saw that on one of the shops. And uh, looking at all the options, whatever it can do, I was again fascinated by it, that uh, it has so many buttons and options, uh, calculations to perform. But an 8th grade student, cannot use all the functionality of the scientific calculator, right? It's mainly used uh, once you are in the engineering or at least in 10th, uh, like in 11th or 12th grade. But uh, just because it has the option to do a lot of things, you can solve board mass and all, which was not easy to solve on uh, like normal calculators. That was my second computational device, which I got. And then uh, after high school, uh, like I was too much into math and science and I was always fascinated uh, with science and technology, what power it can bring, what problems it can solve, and what impact it can create, not just um, like in terms of the applications which are getting created, but also in terms of like how it's impacting our uh, life and society uh, globally. So uh, that was my third device, and uh, till uh, from since then, uh, since that time, I have been. Uh, like too much into math and computer science just and uh, that's how like uh, my journey moved from uh, like classical computing towards the quantum computing as well. So let's talk about what does the future of computing look like, right? With the recent advancements going on globally, we have different types of computing. We have like researchers are working on fog computing, a uh, few of them are working on uh, brain computing as well. So brain computing is uh, that kind of computation where um, uh, brain cells are mainly used on the chips to perform computation. And uh, it has, uh, again, like uh, immense results and uh, huge computation, uh, computational achievement uh, been uh, proved in the papers and in the press release. So next generation of uh, computation is going to be the quantum computing. Uh, why we are going to discuss in the upcoming uh, few minutes. So classical computing, no doubt, it has solved a lot of problems for us and whatever we are able to achieve in terms of AI or in terms of uh, automation or in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, it has been a tremendous growth if we look from uh, like uh, 1980s or 1990s to uh, the current age, right? I still remember when even a desktop huge computer was a dream for many uh, of us. Now everyone is having a laptop and that too which can perform huge computation on system itself if you want to train some neural networks and all. And we are able to like adapt AI or uh, move in that direction as well only because of the computation power uh, we, are, we were able to achieve. Neural network algorithms or machine learning algorithms were being uh, sort of like uh, developed or uh, uh, designed by the scientists and researchers in 1990s itself. So what was the limitation which was stopping us? It was the computation basically, right? Because of the limitation of the computation, we were not able to implement those algorithms on real computation system and it was just based out of the papers and books those days. But still, even after achieving all those breakthroughs in the field of computation and AI, there are certain use cases which are very complex to be solved on existing uh, systems, not even just your laptops, even uh, by the high performance computing devices like supercomputers which are existing uh, in different countries globally. 
So if we talk about climate modeling, right, it has a lot of uh, variables and parameters. If you are just trying to incorporate all those uh, variables and changes and uh, try to model the, uh, that data to predict something uh, for future, it's not able to perform at that scale and it's not able to handle that level of complexity. Even for the drug discovery use case, all the pharmaceutical industry, even to uh, find out a single molecular uh, structure, which can be a breakthrough for certain disease or uh, finding the right molecule for certain vaccine, it is very challenging for them and it takes years for them to simulate that right molecule and get the results out of it. And even in terms of like, uh, if you talk about supply chain, uh, the optimization in the supply chain industry has also been a huge challenge because of various factors which we have to consider wh while doing the modeling and optimization there. So how we can overcome all this? Like, what is the solution? Like, if you have all these limitations with existing systems and uh, even with the supercomputers, we are not able to achieve that. Uh, what is the solution for that? So. Uh, Quantum computing, uh, quantum computers have been promising over there. So this is one of the image you can see. Is, is, uh, it is from the lab where uh, the whole device is not the quantum computer, just the chip at the bottom, uh, what you can see, uh, like hanging, right? That is the quantum processor. But the whole infra, like the whole system is for making sure that uh, whatever the uh, uh, environment or whatever uh, noise reduction techniques we need to adapt or uh, the freezing uh, we need for uh, achieving that uh, superposition and entanglement state that can be achieved uh, we need that kind of huge system but research ha is uh, research is also going on in terms of like uh, going beyond these huge devices to the chip based quantum processors so that uh, we don't have to limit ourselves or limit the computation in terms of the devices we have. Uh, so what makes uh, quantum computers very powerful, right? So it is the properties of quantum mechanics and physics, which in combination sort of like gives superpower to the quantum computer. So in classical bit, we have zeros and ones, right? The existing uh, laptops or computers or whatever computational device you use that performs in terms of uh, bit operations. So we have zeros and ones, and uh, either uh, whenever you will store any data or when you perform some sort of uh, computation, the data will be stored in the form of zeros and ones, uh, the binary values. Whereas uh, in, when we talk about quantum bits, right? So quantum bits are the, uh, like as we have classical bits or bits in the classical computation, the same way in quantum computers, we have quantum bits also called as qubits. So qubits can have zero, one or any state in between, which provides uh, like exponential uh, power to the single bit, which the, the amount of information which it can store. So for example, uh, with two bits, how many bits of uh, data we can process? Four, right? Yep. So and if you will increase one more bit, let's say if you have three bits, then eight, right? But in case of uh, quantum bit, it goes exponential. Eight states can be processed uh, at one time in case of classical bits. But in case of quantum bits, it has all those states, but it has superposition states as well, which gives us additional uh, computation power while processing uh, any sort of like uh, information or do some sort of like calculations. So superposition is one of the properties. Uh, entanglement is another property of uh, quantum uh, computers. Like it comes from the quantum mechanics itself, where if you make any changes in any one uh, particle, immediately the other particle will be able to guess it and it will be able to uh, make the adjustment according to that change. It doesn't matter the distance between them. So that concept is called entanglement which gives uh, sort of like again a uh, huge uh, performance ability to capture the changes whatever is happening and uh, make sure that system is in sync. For quantum communication also scientists have been able to sort of like uh, transfer the information at a distance of 32 or 42 kilometer in Toronto. So what, what do we mean by quantum communication over here, right? 
so the existing communication channels whatever we have uh, no doubt they are very much safe and secure but still there are chances of uh, attacks on that because of which the important information can be leaked so the quantum communication is not something which is going to save us from the traffic or it's going to immediately help us in downloading the TikTok videos or Instagram videos what we keep watching on our news feeds or Instagram feeds, right? Instead, it promises or you can say it's, it is a monumental step in the field of quantum communication to make sure that uh, security breaches or the information whatever we are trying to uh, communicate from one place to another is it's much more safe and reliable so who is leading in the quantum revolution right so there are many global companies which are involved and even india has its own quantum ecosystem so india has a national quantum mission how many of you are aware of that six thousand crores right so that's around 700 million dollars indian government has committed just for the quantum computing and the revolution of quantum computing is the one uh, like why all the nations are uh, invested on it because the one who leads the quantum technologies will be leading the world so it's all about like what all you can innovate and develop to be a global leader uh, globally so these are some of the companies like uh, INQ, IBM Quantum, Rigetti, uh, Xanadu, Terra Quantum, Google's Quantum AI uh, which are building the platform, uh, they are building the packages as well. So QuizKit and TensorFlow Quantum are one of the like most commonly used packages. Second one is like uh, Penny Lane, uh, like if you want to get it started, you can go and explore those packages. So, but given all these promises, whatever I have talked so far, right, uh, like what all quantum computers can do, how it is better than the classical computers. Still, there are a lot of challenges which exist uh, for the existing uh, quantum computers. For example, stability of the qubit is, is still uh, something which scientists are working towards to make the qubits more and more stable so that when the information gets processed, we have uh, the right information with us. Scalability has been the another challenge. So if I uh, remember back in 2019, when I started with quantum computing, we just had uh, like qubit systems provided by IBM of two qubits, five qubits, uh, and so on. Like it was not even 50 qubit system which were accessible to the public uh, openly. Nowadays, all those lower qubit systems have been uh, sort of like uh, discarded and IBM is just offering 100 plus qubit systems. So IBM quantum computers are gate based quantum computers like that. There are different type of quantum computers. Ion, uh, we have uh, trap ion based, uh, we have quantum annulers, we, uh, annealing based quantum computers, right? So based on like what type of quantum computers they have the number of qubits and based on that for different uh, problem prototyping or solutioning, there are different type of quantum computers which best fit. So we can't expect to a certain problem to be solved efficiently by any of the quantum computers. So that is one of the challenge and because of the environment we have around the qubit, right? So qubit is the smallest particle uh, like which is used for uh, processing the information or storing the data uh, when we do some sort of computation. So in case of qubit, uh, uh, like making, like there will be certain noise also induced from the system. It can be because of the temperature or it can be because of the electric, uh, electricity signals and what not. So scientists are working towards that and Q control is one of the companies who have developed the error uh, correction tech algorithms so that uh, the information when it gets processed, the results which we get is more accurate and optimized rather than like uh, uh, results getting affected by the noise based systems. So those are the certain challenges which are getting improved at much faster scale and it is expected that uh, by 2035 the global economy uh, just for the quantum will be around 1 trillion dollars by certain market research analysts. So uh, how we can uh, sort of like achieve uh, something uh, for this right. So collaboration is the key. Institute, industry and uh, a government can collaborate with one, uh, with one another and can make the advancement going on. And uh, there are certain uh, sustainable development projects as well, uh, which are defined by United Nations. So there are certain groups which are just focused on SDGs uh, project, like uh, climate change, food, uh, supply chain and all, so that uh, quantum technology can be used for the humanity. 
So there is an institute like uh, Open Quantum Institute, which is uh, based out of uh, uh, Switzerland, and they are incubated in CERN. They are also actively working uh, in the SDGs focused schools. So what is in for you, right? If you're interested and if you want to get started, the very first thing is start learning. Look at the resources and the community which is available publicly uh, open for you. And even India has its own mission. So you can get in touch with uh, the mission which is getting driven by uh, Indian officials as well to see how you can learn, how you can collaborate and work on the projects. And come up with the ideas, build the startups, uh, do some sort of research work, file patents, publish papers and uh, form a group. And that's how you can sort of like uh, bring revolution in this industry. So. Uh, so the feature is going to be quantum computing with this uh, I will end my talk.